Hello you guys, how's it going? It's Star says here and in today's video I'm gonna rebuild the Diza on my BMW Z4 and you're gonna find that this process is compatible with a bunch of other BMW models and my car in particular is a 2003 BMW Z4 with the 2.5 liter engine. I went ahead and looked online to see how much new Dizas would cost and they range anywhere from 80 to 120 on eBay depending on where you go and considering the fact that the diesel on these cars go bad very often I figured what's the point of buying a new diesel if it's just gonna go bad eventually so I went ahead and looked online a little more and I found this really really cool kit and this kit on eBay is uh, actually made to prevent all the problems that come with a lot of these diesels and they're supposed to last much much longer one of the main differences between this new kit and a regular diesel is that the little flap that spins left and right and the original diesel is cheap plastic that eventually goes bad and in many cases it actually breaks into pieces which is very bad because those pieces will fall into your engine which could grenade it and the new one in this kit is made out of a much tougher aluminum and you'll see the difference in the video going ahead and another thing is that it's actually designed to fit on the Ziza in a different way whereas the old version would just have this little pin that was also known to fall off the assembly and destroy your engine when with the new case you don't have that problem it all screws in and it tightens and it's just made much better and it's gonna last much much longer I'm gonna provide links to this in the description below as well as in the corner of this video somewhere and it's gonna be for eBay as well as Amazon for those of you who order Amazon and I really recommend this much more than just getting a new diesel because this is gonna completely change the way it's made and it's gonna last much longer and you won't have to deal with it in the future before I remove the diesel I'm also going to remove the air filter and the whole entire assembly just to have a good clearance to take it off and it might not be needed with your car so go ahead and check and see if you have to take it off or not but that's how I'm gonna start this video in order to have the air filter assembly removed you're gonna need a flathead screwdriver as well as a ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket this is gonna be two clips that you need to pop off and then you're gonna use their 10 millimeter socket to remove two screws that are on the side and once all of that is taken off you should be good to go In order to have the diesel removed, you're just going to take off this little clip, as you can see in the video. It's very easy to do, you just press it and it pulls out. And on top of that, you're going to need a T40. There's two bolts, one that's very visible and one that's not. And as you can tell, I wasn't able to get it off with this screwdriver. So you're going to need a ratchet, and if you don't have a ratchet with a T40, you can do this. It's uh, a little ratchet, but it <laughs> literally it's a little ratchet, but it works just fine. Just get a small socket and then put the T40 in and it should be just fine taking it off like that. Just be careful not to let that T40 fall off the socket. Once you have those screws off, just go ahead and pull it back and try not to do it at an angle. As you can see, I try to do it pretty straight. And once you get the D's out, look at the top and make sure the pin is still there. Because if it's not, you're going to have to reach into the car and get that pin out because it probably fell into the engine. And turning the engine on with that pin could grenade it. 
with the Diza out of the car now as you can see where I'm pointing there's a little hole and you're gonna do a little test just to make sure that the Diza is in good condition for this repair kit and all you do is put your finger over it and as you can tell when you uh, let go of the flap it just lets go just a little any more than that or if it goes by itself is a sign of a bad Diza and you're gonna have to buy a new Diza on top of that just take a look at the top make sure there aren't any cracks or anything like that in the frame most of these are really good and they pass all these tests but just make sure just in case yours isn't we're going to begin the process of rebuilding this and there's a little cover on the bottom just pry it out with a flathead screwdriver and we're gonna have to take off that little clip that I took off really quickly the little washer that was right there at the end and after that you're just gonna have to pop that little holder off the kit also has this little uh, strap that will allow you to pull it out of its way just to make things a little more convenient as you can see right here in this video I didn't find much use to it but it's there once you do that go ahead and get the screw that came with the kit it requires a 13 millimeter socket and we're gonna remove that yellow piece that was inside so all you do is get that screw inside and once it's at a very good condition you're gonna use a ratchet with that 13 millimeter socket and you're gonna tighten it and bring it towards the center so the process of doing this is just simply so that once it's well in enough you're gonna get something and you're just gonna pull it out and it's gonna take the whole assembly out After that, what you're going to have to do is use a flathead screwdriver and pop that pin off, the one that's on the very top. And it is a little hard to do, but eventually it will come off. Once the pin is off, you're pretty much good to go, and you'll be able to take that plastic flap off. You can compare it to the new one, and you can tell that it's a big difference cheap plastic nice aluminum one is gonna last much longer than the other with the plastic flat removed go ahead and clean the surface and make sure that little hole right there is also cleaned off make sure everything's good all I used to get the surface clean was just a damp paper towel Once you have the surface cleaned off, you're going to remove this little pin that is already on the flap. It came with the pin in just for safer shipping practices, so just go ahead and use a hex nut and have that removed. Now that the service is cleaned, we're going to start getting ready to put everything into the DISA. And one of the things you're going to have to do is use the grease that came with the kit as well as one of the Q-tips. And we're going to grease that section that I'm currently working on right now. And you don't need to put too much, just enough to get it done. Now that everything is greased, we're going to put that black pin and we're going to place it inside and push it in a little make sure it's nice and snug and then as it's gonna stick out on the top just press it down because we're gonna put the flap on and we're gonna use this thread lock that came with the kit just open it up put it on the q-tip and you don't need to put too much it's just enough to change the color to the very top of the pin to that red that you're looking at and we're gonna go ahead and put that thread lock into the new flap just so that it holds on even better
Now you're able to put the new flap inside and make sure that the cornered side of the flap is facing the cornered side of the Diza and the curved side on the curved side. You can also use the pin that was previously on the Diza to hold the new flap in place and at this point we're going to make sure that the little black pin that we placed in as you can see right now in this video is all the way in and it's nice and snug. After that we're going to go ahead and prepare to put the pin inside that section and before you do that you're going to have to put some of that washer inside as you can see right there and once the washer is inside we're going to use some more thread lock and we're going to put just a little on the very end and then we should be good to go. Once you have the thread lock on the pin, we're going to go ahead and place the new pin all the way inside. Make sure that's also nice and snug. And then once we're done with that, we're going to use another hex nut and we're going to tighten it until it can't move anymore. And this is also another way of how this is well made because on the older diesels, the flap gets loose after a while and it doesn't stay in place but using this hex up right here will make sure that it stays in place and prevent it from getting loose in the future once the pin is inside we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna place that little black thing that I pointed at we're gonna remove this little strap right here and we're going to place it back on top so that it moves with the entire assembly and once you do that you're also going to put that little cover that came with the kit right there and place it over that new pin once you're done with that just go ahead and place the door back on and listen for a snap Okay, and the very last thing you're going to have to do before placing the new Diza inside is to change the O-ring, which is something I didn't really go too well in this video, but the original O-ring on your Diza is somewhat embedded into it, and it's uh, not necessarily hard to take off, but it's very tedious, and I ended up using a flathead screwdriver as well as a hex nut to strip off the original o-ring that was on the diza and i also used a wired brush like the ones that you use to clean a charcoal grill to go ahead and rip off any of that orange residue that was left on the diza and once that was all removed i was able to place the new o-ring inside and i also suggest that you put some oil around the o-ring so that when you place the Diza back into the car, it will slip in much easier and you won't damage the O-ring. So I'm going to go ahead and place the Diza back on the car. And this was a day later because as you can tell, it was starting to get dark. And all you do is just slide it in the way you would slide it out when you first took it off. And on top of that, you're going to put those two T40 screws back inside as well as that electrical clip and once you're done with that you're going to go ahead and put back the air filter assembly back onto the car. I hope this video helps you guys out with your Diza kit and as I'm doing this voiceover it's been several weeks since I've done this and I noticed that my car doesn't make that rattly noise anymore it drives a lot smoother and overall the best thing is that I don't have to worry about this diesel anymore since I know that it's pretty good to go with a brand new kit that is made to not fail anymore anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you haven't already subscribe and I'll catch you next time